Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from howtodrawcomics.net. And today, what we're going to be talking about is booting up the drawing system, getting into the zone. And I'll be giving you my personal tips, advice, and insights as to how I do that for myself as well. Because this is a struggle that many of us budding comic book artists contend with every time we sit down at the drawing board. Here's what happens. See if you can relate with me on this. You start sketching out a kick-ass pose for the next character that you're going to draw. Maybe you're using the mannequin model, maybe the box method to construct your figure. You're attempting to do your best to get the proportions right, make sure that anatomy is in check. But for some reason, despite your focus on these key areas, the pose is just lacking something. Can the construction of the figure just isn't stacking up the way it should be. And indeed it should be because you've got a little bit of drawing experience behind you. You have a solid grasp on the fundamentals. Maybe you are a professional comic book artist. Maybe you've been doing this for decades. And yet why is this still something that you have to tussle with? Something that you need to overcome? Something that is coming up for you when you sit down to draw at the beginning of the day. Well, my friend, it's because you need to warm up. You need to give yourself that space to get into the mode to activate drawing mode. Now, this is something that came up for me just yesterday when I was setting out to draw a brand new piece of Dragon Ball Z fan art. You guys know that I'm a big fan of the anime and the manga alike. Love them both. And it was a fan art of a character from the series called Bulma. Beautiful woman. Uh, at the request of my brother Corey, we wanted to do... Look, I'm going to be honest with you right now. We wanted to do a sexy Bulma fan art, thinking that when we posted it out there, it was going to go off. It was going to go viral, because who doesn't like some uh, <laughs> some smutty fan art of a character that they're probably familiar with. Um, okay, so, I mean, that's uh, that's really probably one of the key reasons we get into drawing in the first place, to draw sexy chicks at, or at least, I'll say that for myself. I won't speak for anybody else, but that was a big motivator, admittingly. And... It wasn't just me that wanted to draw that stuff. It was all my friends in primary school and throughout high school who wanted me to draw that stuff as well. Uh, in fact, funny story, one of my best buddies in high school, he caught on to the fact very quickly, very early on, that I was able to draw sexy ladies at a teenager level. So they actually sucked, but... What I was capable of was quite impressive to my peers in high school. And so he made a request. He said, could you just draw me? I mean, at that age, any naked, anything naked that is female is going to do the trick, okay? That is the number one commissioned request of every teenage boy. And so, of course, he, re he makes this request. And I do my best. I'm a little bit weirded out getting into it. I've never really done it before. The The maximum I did was in primary school drawing a W with two little, uh, two little dots on the bottom of each of the dips in the W. And, uh, well, well, I got in trouble for that as well. But let me continue on with this story in my teenage years. So I draw this uh, smutty piece of artwork for my buddy, and he loves it, takes it home, he's going to treasure it. But he needs to find a hiding spot for it because he doesn't want his mother to discover it, right? That might be an awkward conversation. Well, that awkward conversation happens anyway because his brother discovers this piece of lewd, drawn artwork in his CD player. And goes straight to his mother. 
tells his mum about it. And, of course, my buddy gets a big old lecture and a note that is requested by his mother to give to me. And in the note it says that she needs to talk to my mother about this situation. Well, I look at my buddy and I say, no, way! this is your problem, man. This is nothing to do with me. You asked me to do it in the first place. You got busted. You deal with the consequences. And he's like, no, but you have to. You, you have to give this note to your mother and hook up a correspondence between the two of them. And I'm like, no, hell no. <sighs> and it wasn't just, uh, I've always had requests to draw uh, less than safe for work content. And and I haven't really taken on any of those commissions, to be honest with you, because some of the requests that you get are totally crazy. Anyway, so fast forward to now, uh, I'm open to this conversation that Corey and I are having about drawing a sexy Bulma from Dragon Ball Z. We think it's going to be a great idea. And so that's exactly what I set out to do. I've got a little bit of spare time on my hands. I want to do something fun. You know, take take a bit of a breather from the the actual work that I've got to do on a daily basis. And even then, this will probably become a demo of some sort, showing people how to draw beautiful looking female poses. Anyway, so I'm going and I'm drawing out these figures. I start out with the first one, and it looks okay, but I know that it could be better. However, I'm reluctant to do another one because I've invested a little bit of time into this first pose that I've jotted down onto the page. It's certainly got to be five minutes for you to feel invested in the direction that your drawing is going in. And so I keep on building upon it, trying to make it work. I pull this out a little bit more here, tuck this in there, shaping, sculpting. Again, trying my darndest to get this thing going in the direction that I want it to go in. And I know what the truth is. I know that what I really need to be doing is a series of poses and selecting the best pose from that lineup I end up placing down onto the page. That's the way it's done. Because here's the thing. Oftentimes, our first idea, the first thing we draw out onto the page isn't going to be the best, and we hate that. We don't want that to be the case. We don't want to have to go through five different figure drawings in order to arrive at the one that we will then have to reconstruct anyway in order to reach the best outcome we possibly can for whatever drawing it is we're going to take through to the finish line. But I decide to do this anyway. I bite the bullet. I toss aside the first pose I come up with, which isn't bad, really, by most standards. I mean, I'm sure most people would have seen it and thought I was crazy for, for doing up another pose. They would have said, yep, that's the one. Let's go with it. But for me, I wasn't satisfied. And very few artists are satisfied with the work that they're doing, but that's still not enough to motivate them to try something different, give themselves some additional options. But that's exactly what I do. And the very next pose that I draw down for beautiful Bulma is going a way better than the first pose. Even as I've only constructed half of the body of the following pose, it's it's got a different kind of energy to it. It's got more gesture to the shape of the contours. I'm laying down to describe her body to the soul of the pose itself. It's got so much more movement in it. It's got spirit. It feels, it evokes a feeling of sexiness. And it draws you in. It looks so much more alive. Whereas the one before, it looked stiff and jagged and kind of contrived. Something that many figure drawings run into. It's, it's a major problem that, again, comes up 
for every artist out there. And we're constantly trying to figure out ways around it. But little did we know, the one thing that we needed to do was to just see that first set of lines we lay down onto the page as a trial testing period. See that first figure we draw as a test dummy. Just something to get the badness out of our system so that we can get to the good stuff. Now, sometimes you're going to be lucky. There are going to be times where it just so happens by a fluke that you wind up drawing the best possible thing right out of the gate that you could have come up with. And maybe you've even gone through a few different variations and still that first thing that you drew down, nothing beats it. But that's very rare. And more often than not, what you're going to find is that you've just got to push through that first pose, understand in your mind that it probably sucks, that it's probably not going to be the one that you end up going with in the long run. And once it's done, move on, okay? Do a couple more poses. So what I end up doing is three additional poses beyond the first one that I did for Beautiful Bomber. And maybe that's what I'll call the piece. Beautiful Bomber, does that work? I don't know. So... I do have four more poses. No, three more poses. So I've got four poses all up by the end. I've got the first one that is the suckiest one out of the entire lot. And then the next one, which is pretty good. The third one and the fourth one, all quite good. All of those later three would have worked quite well. And they're variations, okay? So they're not iterations of the same pose that I did initially. Like, oh, maybe I'll try out a pose from the back. Maybe I'll try out a pose from the front with a bit of a twist. Maybe I'll tilt our shoulders that way in this pose. Maybe your hips this way in the next pose. And I explore a little bit. I give myself the opportunity to try out a few different things simply because I don't exactly know what it is I'm after in the beginning. And sometimes I'll jot something down onto the page and it'll spring up a new venture, a new creative avenue that I could go down and maybe that'll lead somewhere that I didn't even expect and I'll be able to come up with something better than I could have imagined. And I think this is, this is the thing. When it comes to drawing, when it comes to your art, oftentimes you have two minds about it. You're asking yourself, well, do I need to have an idea to go into the drawing with? Do I, how refined does it need to be in my head first in order for it to work? Do you need an idea at all? Or can you just start drawing onto the page and the idea will start to form itself organically? And my response to that is I believe you can have a vague idea in your head, but most of the work is going to be done just through exploration, through leaving an open-ended opportunity for yourself to expand upon the idea and let it grow. In other words, you want to plant the seed, but you don't want to water it and raise it inside your head. You don't want it to blossom inside your head. No, you... You want to do that through the drawing process. You want to have the seedling of the idea, then plant it down onto the page and grow it. That's been my approach. And sometimes I forget how well it works, which is why I stick with the first thing that I laid down onto the page. Accidentally sometimes. And I hate myself for it because... I keep on developing and refining and pushing that initial idea only to realize when it's too late that, damn it, if I had to just spent two minutes on this and then two minutes on another one and two minutes on another one after that, I could have had the best of those three options and instead been polishing that up. So how do you activate drawing mode? When especially it's the first drawing of the day and you're working on a brand new piece? Well, what I would highly suggest to you, here is my number one tip. The thing that's going to work for you almost every time. 
draw out a trial, sketch. Then, a couple other sketches after that. Because that first trial sketch is just to warm you up. It's a warm-up, okay? See it as a warm-up. Know that no matter how good you think you are or how much you're going to perfect that initial drawing, that it's going to suck, probably. And that anything that comes there on after is going to be the culmination of all the absence now issues that the first one had. Because you're going to discover the errors. You're going to discover the flaws. You're going to discover what it is you want to avoid at all costs with that first pose, with that first sketch, whatever it is. It might not even be a pose. It might be a head sketch or something like that. But you're going to discover what you don't want during that phase. And you'll be that much closer to determining what it is that is most going to make that idea work. And you'll exercise it in the following sketches that you do. So it's really a simple answer to a complicated challenge that many of us struggle with consistently, even when we know how to get past it. And so the real problem here is getting too hooked on that first initial idea and being reluctant, sometimes so reluctant that you don't move on at all to another option to exploring the variety of different directions the drawing could otherwise go in during that preliminary stage. And the preliminary planning of a drawing really does need to take place. It needs to have its space throughout the process because if you don't give it that, if you don't go through idea exploration, you're missing out on a very important creative aspect of the workflow itself. And what you'll wind out with as a result is something that looks unimaginative and generic, something that you got so invested in, so attached to that you couldn't let go of, and slowly but surely you you polished it up layer upon layer until it was so stiff, so... Uh, so set in stone that it just didn't have any vitality to it. There was none left. And people sense that coming through in the finished piece. People, they feel that there was not as much creativity present in the output that you had due to the path that you went down as there would have been if you let yourself be creatively free in the beginning and not become attached to anything. Okay, so the real key here is not to place too much importance, not to pat yourself on the back too hard or to diminish your efforts too much in the beginning, but to have an even keeled, almost detached, association with the work that you're putting down onto the page, at least at the start. Now, once you see a good idea come about on the page and you love the way in which it's headed, it hits you with a spark of inspiration that gets you excited, then you can become a little bit more invested. Then you you know that you're onto something, that the time you're about to invest into this particular creative avenue that you've opened up is going to be a worthwhile endeavor that it's probably going to lead to somewhere good. But don't force what is a bad idea to try and make it good because it will always stay as bad. It's true what they say, you can't polish a turd, right? Like if it is flawed from the beginning, it is built upon an unstable foundation that has very little merit It doesn't matter what you do to that piece. It doesn't matter how much you try to tinker away at it. In the end, what you're hoping for, what you're what you're setting out to do, just it isn't going to become realized. And not in the way that you think it will be. It'll be a much less satisfactory realization if it's realized at all. 
So make sure that you value your time. Make sure that you're uh, investing it in an artwork that you're creating, which is actually going to be impactful. Something that you can look at the, at the end and go, hey, wow, I'm glad I spent days. I'm glad maybe that I spent weeks on this thing because look how much of an incredible reward I've gotten at the end of the hard work I put into this. It was worth it. You never want to get to the end of a piece of work that you spent, that you put time into only to say, man, that was, I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish that I hadn't spent much that much time and energy putting this thing together because you're going to resent it. And then that'll lead to an associated resentment of your craft itself. And you certainly don't want that to happen too often. Because those feelings of disappointment within yourself, of unsatisfactory experience when it comes to your art, well, that's going to get activated again and again every time you sit down to draw. And sooner or later, you'll be sitting there working on your art, something that you should love, something that you say that you're passionate about, and feeling terrible for some reason. And the true reason of it will be the resentment that you've associated with it because you've simply not been daring enough to push yourself past the first attempt of whatever artwork it is you're setting out to do. Making mistakes, reiterating your art, and having another go at it, having it not go perfectly is the key to winding out with artwork that is memorable, that stands the test of time, artwork that you love, artwork that you're proud of. That's so important. I make mistakes constantly. And it's embarrassing because sometimes I'm making mistakes in front of people that I'm doing a demonstration for. However, I try to remember this that I'm showing you, whoever it is, this demonstration to, the real process, the real way in which a great piece of artwork unfolds. I'm showing them that making mistakes, that having things not run perfectly, just comes with the territory. And so the next time you sit down, fresh at the drawing board, you're looking at that blank piece of paper and you're about to jump into your next masterpiece and you're feeling the pressure, you're feeling the amount of expectation that you've got for this thing pile up on top of you. Remember this, relax, chill out. Nothing is set in stone. Everything can change, just like the nature of life itself. Nothing stays the same. And that your drawing process that you are about to take part in, it is going to be a heck of a journey. Okay, it could go anywhere. It's going to be an adventure to remember. And by the end of it, hopefully... If you have been adventurous enough, you'll wind out with something that is truly memorable, something that you're happy with, something that is the epitome of the idea that you initially had. You've got to explore to find that epitome. You've got to sometimes do all the wrong things in order to figure out what the right things are. That is at least what I've found in my experience. And the thing that has always worked, whether I've liked it or not, is to get the dud pose down as soon as possible. Then following that, start to ramp up their quality. Learn from the first, learn from the second, learn from the third, then start experimenting. Heck, you don't even have to do four poses like I did. Do 20 poses. See which one sticks out to you the most. Show some people. That's exactly what I did with the Bulma sketch that I came up with. I showed him the female poses that I'd come up with for her, and he told me which one he liked best. I don't know how to make decisions. 
I, I know so I can guess sometimes what's going to work based on my own perspective, but showing my art to others is really how I get an unbiased flavor of feedback. I can't I can't get that from myself because I'm 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 either going to just hate everything I do, which isn't accurate. You know, not everything I do is terrible, even if I think it is, and not everything I do is great, even if I think it is. My opinion about my art really counts for squat. Really, what I need to do is just enjoy the process no matter what, and I would suggest the same thing to you. But if you want an opinion, show your art to a few people. Now, don't just take what they say is gospel because they might not be right either. It's just, it's just their opinion. But gather a few opinions, balance it out with what you intuitively think is accurate about your art, and go from there. So I hope that helps you out a little bit. And really, that wraps up what I wanted to say on this particular topic. It's just a little nugget of information of insight that I hope will help you forward, that will simply remind you not to be too hard on yourself right at the beginning. Realize you've got to warm up, especially if you're putting pencil to paper. For the very first time throughout the day, you're going to have to go through that warm-up period. So don't bank too much on the first thing you lay down onto the page. That's all I'm saying. It is that simple. You're going to want to hold on to the first thing you lay down on another page, but be brave enough to move forward and try something else and then something else after that. Give yourself some options. Uh, what I'll talk about next is uh, some of the things that I've got planned, which are coming up very soon on howtodrawcomics.net. And I don't tell you about this enough. I don't remind you, but I have got a website for this channel, howtodrawcomics.net. If you're someone coming up in the game, you're trying to learn how to draw comic books, and you'd like a resource that gives you the knowledge and ability to be able to do that, then howtodrawcomics.net, the site that I've created for you, is the place to go. Because on the site, which has a ton of free content on there, you're going to find free tutorials, free videos, just like this one but also demos and a bunch of other cool things. We've got a podcast on there. And then if you are ready to delve deeper on some of this stuff, we've got an entire course library that hosts uh, a number of learning volumes by instructors such as David Finch, myself, Ed Foychuk, Trent Kanuga, um, and, and so many other instructors on there who cover a range of topics, anything that you'd be struggling with right now, anatomy, proportions, figure drawing, whatever it is, there's a good chance you're going to find the answers to some of those problems in the howtodrawcomics.net course library. Of course, I've got a bunch of workshops coming up. By the way, I should tell you that the character creator workshop filled up Within the week, in about five days, and so I'm really looking forward to jumping into that. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, spilling the beans on my own character, in my entire character creator process. I'm sure I'll end up inevitably giving a bit more bang for everybody's buck because, well, you know, you guys know how much I like to deliver on the amount of information uh, I give to people. Uh, you can't stop me talking. I'll just ramble on about the same thing uh, over and over again until it is ingrained in your brain. But like I said, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to do this program. It's always fun catching up live with students because there's that interaction there, uh, similar, not unlike what's happening here with the stream, but you know, people are able to ask questions. I can help them through whatever problems they're having in the process that I'm showing them. I can give them that all-important critique and feedback and advice that they can't really get from anywhere else. You know, I, I used to hate having to go through the learning process on my own 
I couldn't really ask anybody. Like my mum doesn't know squat about drawing, right? And none of my friends really drew. I, the only people that I was watching do art lessons were people who are over in America, you know, like David Finch. And at the time, I really didn't have his contact information to reach out to him and ask for advice. I hit up a few artists on Facebook and they they got back to me actually and they, they would give me some tips here and there. But usually it was a few paragraphs, but it still wasn't – it still wasn't like having – a trained professional looking over your shoulder, seeing your work and really going through it with a fine tooth comb to point out to you all the areas that you were blind to that you could address and which would precisely move you forward the most. You know, it can feel like we're taking such little steps with this stuff sometimes and it's just because we haven't honed in yet on the things within our art that would be a real game changer if it was attended to. And so I I, lo- I just love that level of interaction with the students that jump into these workshops and it gives me the opportunity to be able to do that stuff. I think it's the future of online education. I'm going to keep on doing those. In fact, the next workshop that I'm going to run, and by the way, sign up to the howtodrawcomics.net email list because I open the doors to people who are subscribed to that list before I announce to the public these workshops. And the reason that you want to be on the list is because sometimes the workshops sell out even before I can get it out to the public. Like the Heads and Faces workshop, which sold out multiple times and I never really released it to the public. So the next workshop that I'm going to be doing is sequential storytelling. And the reason that I want to do sequential storytelling, so actually drawing comic book pages, is because everybody wants to know about it. Uh, I get questions in regards to drawing comic book pages all the time, how to lay out panels, how to place characters into a scene, how to set the scenes up. And for some reason or another, even though this is a massive challenge for so many artists in general, right? most artists can't do sequentials. And comic book artists who are trying to learn this stuff just have nowhere to really learn it in depth. Like, where can you go? Like, someone tell me, because I've tried looking this stuff up for myself. I've tried researching it for my learning programs. I've tried looking it up just for, to, to inform myself on how to do certain things, but there's just nothing out there on sequential storytelling. And, the, the, well, the th- they, that's a lie because there are some things out there on sequential storytelling, but it doesn't get anywhere near in-depth enough. It doesn't give you the, the real stuff that's going to help you out. It's like overview. Here's an overview on how to do sequentials. But me, man, like I... I love thinking about sequential storytelling. That's one of the reasons that I do comics in the first place is because I just think it's the the best storytelling vehicle. You get the visuals, you get the dialogue, and you get the experience of holding the book in your hand like you would a novel, and you just get to be part of that. You get to smell the pages, you get to you get to be a part of that story, and it's it's the next best thing to being a movie director except it's more involved for the reader. And obviously, you can pull it off all on your own. You can you can draw a comic book. You can even ink and color it like I I learned how to do on your own if you've got the time and the ability to do it. But like I said, I just feel like this is one area where it's the resources and the knowledge out there is really lacking. I don't even know the conventional way, really, to do a comic book page I've just made it up on my own and and somehow it's I've, somehow I've stumbled my way through the dark in order to figure it all out and to to be able to create comic book pages that are funnily enough um I have a little bit of a knack for not to brag too much but the only reason I think that I have a knack for creating comic book pages because I didn't really have a whole lot of practice with them before I started working of, officially on comic books but the reason that I think I've got a bit of a knack for them is because I'm a big movie buff. I love watching movies. I want to be a movie director. And I've got to tell you, when I'm drawing up a comic book page, I really do feel like I'm holding a camera directing a movie. I'm figuring out where all the characters are going to be situated, how the panel and, and what is in it will be framed, what kind of panel is it going to be most appropriate for the scene that I want to present, 
how they're going to be layered, whether they'll be set up in a grid. It's it's really just so so fun. I if there's anything that I love if I if I love drawing one thing the most beyond everything else, I love drawing characters, I love drawing illustrations, but it's comic book pages that I love drawing the most because I get to tell a story, I get to explore the scene from multiple vantage points, and it's just you get to be so creative with it. So that's why I want to make that the focus of, of the next workshop that I set up. And I mean, who, who knows how many people will be interested in it? I expect that we'll get definitely a few people booking in um, just because it's, yeah, I mean, I feel like if you want to make comics, uh, you, it, it's so valuable to have a workshop like that to get into in the first place. All right. Um, and so the other things that I want to do with how to draw comics.net, specifically the channel. So I've, I'm going to start adding the interviews I do with people and even some of these talks that I'm doing with you here to the podcast. So if you're on Spotify, if you use the, the Apple iTunes store, you can actually listen to the how to draw comics.net podcast for free on these platforms. I don't charge money for the podcast at all, and you can switch it on while you're drawing. You know, I love listening to podcasts while I'm drawing, but, and I was even listening to just the How to Draw Comics.net podcast the other day, because while I was drawing on uh, uh, the the Bomber piece, actually, uh, just because it was just, it was so easy to listen to and get into, and it's very appropriate to the action of actually drawing something. You know, you're getting this drawing knowledge, filling your head from artists from all walks of life with different experiences. And it just, I couldn't think of a better thing to switch on when I sit down at the drawing board to uh, to just fall into the zone with. So there's the podcast, which I'll be adding more episodes to. And then finally, uh, so this is a pretty big announcement. It's more of a test. It's an it's, a, it's an experiment. I'm not even sure if it's going to work. But what I would like to do, and I was thinking about doing it tonight or today, depending on where you are in the world, or maybe even tomorrow. But what I'd like to do is live narration with you of specific pieces of artwork that I've recorded. And one of the reasons that I want to do that is because you know, I don't mind narrating when it's just me talking into the microphone and I'm sort of lending my thoughts and doing a pre-recorded uh, narration for a video demo that I might put out to the YouTube channel. But it, it never really feels like I'm talking to someone. It never feels like I'm, I'm giving that value to you, really, if I'm pre-recording it just on my own. And so I thought, uh, I had the idea of, well, I've got all these recordings that I've never narrated, that no one's ever really seen the process of. So what? imagine if I could do a live with you, you could tune into it, watch the artwork unfold, and I could walk you through exactly what I'm doing live, in person, interact with you. You could leave your questions in the comments section, and I could answer them, and they would actually be, specific to the artwork that I'm showing you the demonstration of. And I just thought that would be super cool. But the reason that I wanted to tell you right now is because I won't be keeping all of those drawing, drawing demonstrations up that I go over the top of with live narration because some of them will be used for, for courses, some of them will be used for, for lessons or included in different packages, that kind of thing. And so I guess it's a it's an opportunity for you, even if it's for a limited time, to actually get some some free premium content uh, and to experience it live, which is not even something that the, the the paid customers will get is that live experience of actually being there as I go over the top of the demo, explaining exactly what is happening within it. So I want to do a few more of these live streams, but instead of just me, you'd look at my mug as I'm telling you something, I'm actually going to be showing you some of these demonstrations 
talking you through it, laying out the details, and revealing what it is I'm thinking, why it is I'm doing the things that I'm doing throughout the process, and and really explaining it as barely as possibly that I pos- as as I possibly can to you. Um, but again, uh, if you want to catch those streams, I'll leave some of them up, but I'll also be taking some of them straight down. So you need to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of them if you do want to see them. The majority of them I'll probably just leave up, but some of them won't be. Some of them will, will be actual lessons that are sold in a premium course or package of some kind uh, that you'll be able to experience firsthand for free, completely free. And all you have to do as payment is subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so that you don't miss when these live lessons are actually happening. So be sure that you do that. Um, And yeah, we'll see how that experiment goes. I don't know. Hopefully it'll work out. I've never really done a live narration over the top of a demo before. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. And hopefully it'll uh, it'll be something that entices you, something that you find valuable or something that'll actually help you out. But that's about all we have time for today. I've really appreciated your company, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Just to recap real quick on what I said in the beginning, what today's topic was really about. It's so simple. I can sum it up in a sentence. See the first thing you draw throughout the day as nothing more than an opportunity to warm up. It's the thing that you're going to use to get you into the zone that you need to be on to draw the really good stuff. So that's uh, that's really the big takeaway uh, that I've got to impart onto you today. And I will be right here with you again very, very soon for another stream. Hit like if you enjoyed the video, if you got some value out of it, and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and ring the bell for notifications if you don't want to miss out on any additional content that comes here on after. And when this stream is done, especially if you're watching the replay, and even if you're tuning in right now, leave a comment in the comment section and lend me your thoughts. Let me know what you'd like to see in streams that I've got coming up in the future. Let me know whether or not the information I gave you during this one actually helped you out. And and if you haven't tried it out yet, let me know how you intend to use it. I'd love to hear from you in those comments. They also push the engagement of the video up so that more people, more artists like you and I will hopefully see the video and get an equal amount of value out of it. I'd say the same thing to actually, I'd give you the same reason for sharing this with your art pals, with family that might be interested in drawing, with anyone you know that would actually find this video useful, pass it on to them and they'll thank you for it. Hopefully it'll make them a better artist, help them get to be where they want to be sooner in their art. And it'll be thanks to you for sharing this content with them. So that's all that I have to say for today. Until next time, look after yourselves, keep on drawing, never stop, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.